Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. Uh, today we are going to finally do some highlighting on a model. Um, try to get the camera as close as I can with the right amount of zoom, but uh, this is as good as it's going to get. I will do a another video about 30 seconds show a close up of the detail work and everything that we've accomplished. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is go over the three brushes I'll be using today. So all Reaper brand, uh, this is the triple zero. We have the five zero and the 10 zero. Triple uh, zero is the largest, as you can see here. Um, and then the five zero, 10 zero is the smallest. So the 10 zero, I'm mostly just gonna use to do some highlighting on the eyes and a couple of the other vents and grills and things like that. Um, most of the highlighting work will be done with the five zero just because it's a little larger, won't take as much time. And then the triple zero, the largest detail brush, uh, I'm going to use just to hit up some vents with their, quote, base coat, because we're going for a brighter kind of glow effect. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do the large brush first and do the venting. So I'm going to start with umber or, or uh, ember orange, sorry. Um, we'll just need a small amount here. Um, Again, all the paints I use are P3 brand, uh, so you can find them on their website or you can order from Games Workshop, direct, or uh, not Games Workshop, sorry, Games of Berkeley directly. Um, just ask for their salesperson, Angela, and she'll be able to set it up for you. So here we go. So again, we've wet the brush, uh, make sure it's nice and clean, dry it off, and then dab it just the tip of the bristles to keep it wet so the paint doesn't stick and dry on. Um, we're gonna mix whatever water's left on our brush in with the paint just a little bit. Um, thin it out just a little bit more, get that right consistency, whatever you're comfortable with. And we're gonna go in, I'm gonna start with the chest piece here and we're just dabbing gently and pulling the brush. Always pull the brush, never push the brush. If you push the brush, it'll damage your bristles and you'll lose that fine tip point, which is the entire point of having uh, expensive hobby brushes. They have those nice fine tips. So I'm just doing the venting on his chest cavity there, or chest plate, I guess. Um, you can see that here on the edge, how now the eyes are drawn to the vent. It kind of gives it a little pop, little flare. Uh, do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll move on to some of the other areas. And I like doing these glow effects um, because when I was a kid, well, I guess I wasn't that young, but uh, when Tron Legacy came out, I just really thought that the look of the armor that everyone wore was really interesting. That whole glow effect. And Mass Effects 2 and 3 really cemented that for me in Dead Space as well, games like that. I really enjoy that glowy track lighting. And seeing it in Dead Space just shows that you can still do a dark feel, a grim dark feel to something and have these bright contrasting things, um, colors and such. So moving on, we have some more vents on the thigh here, just gently using the tip and just dragging the brush, never pushing the brush, always dragging it. Uh, Moving on, let's see what do we got. Another little dot on the thigh here. Gently going in a small circle because it's a circular space. And taking our time looking around the whole model, seeing what areas we can hit. Uh, let's hit up his backpack a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't even have to fully cover in one coat because we're gonna do an even brighter color next uh, after it dries a little bit. So this base orange, this ember orange that we're using is just kind of to make the highlighting, the final highlighting easier um, as we build our way up through orange into a nice brighter uh, yellow orange. So now we're doing the grill on his backpack taking our time, moving nice and slow. The thing about highlighting is that it is tedious work. And you want to take your time with it, 
because it's that final step to bring the model together and really make everything pop and all your hard work stand out. So take your time with it. Uh, I don't know if you've all watched my other videos, but the base code video alone was an hour. Um, and you probably saw I did have to do some touch-up work a few times. Uh, always important to wash your brush periodically as you're doing this so that the bristles stay nice and wet and they're not stained forever. All right, we're gonna move on to his helmet. Get those side vents. Uh, totally lost my train of thought there, sorry folks. Um, so yeah, just really take your time with it because you want it to look good. You don't want to have to go back and do this multiple times because um, it's the highlighting, it's the final step. You don't, you know, you don't need to do two thin coats or anything like that. Because the highlighting is just going to pop there. Um, so we're doing eye lenses now. Always want to make sure you can see I'm placing my finger, my ring finger, I'm placing it on the shoulder pad using it to brace so I get a nice steady hand. So I have very shaky hands. So if you have shaky hands like me, never be afraid to brace yourself like that. Just make sure your model is completely dry, any other paints before you do that so you don't smudge whatever's there and move it all over. So let's get the grill on his nose, I guess you could call it. The beak there. All right, so we have our first coat done. I don't see anything else on the arms. Uh, nothing else I want to touch up, so we're all good there. So there is our first coat of amber orange. We've hit all of the track lighting glowy bits, whatever you want to call it. And that is all we're going to need the triple zero brush for, so I'm just going to put that away. That is also all we're going to need the ember orange paint for. So if you're painting along at home or whatever colors you're using, understand that I started with the darkest color for my track lighting first. So if you want to do green, start with your darkest green and you're going to work your way up. You want to do it in three tiers to get to a nice bright green or orange or whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a yellow orange because it goes with the blue and is a complementary color. Um, and it really just brings some nice flair to it. You can already see, even at this distance, you have those nice orange eyes on the helm, just whoop, draws you right in, okay? So um, when I'm highlighting, I like to start with the innermost things first. So the smallest things basically like right into crevices and stuff like that first and work my way out to the outer model. So the last thing I'm going to be doing is actually the blues. Um, and just before that, I'll do the reds. So uh, let's go ahead and do all of our joint work. Our joints are based with Sanguine, um, sanguine Base. Uh, again, Private Tear Fest Paint. And I'm going to be highlighting with bootstrap leather because as I've said many times, I hate, 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 hate wasting an opportune moment of getting a splash of color in there by using black for my rubberized joints and things like that. So I use that nice deep burgundy. We're going to highlight it with this brown to really bring it out. Now we're moving on to the 5-0 Reaper brush. So again, dipped our brush, uh, bristles, we got it nice and wet, mixed in with the paint, and we're just going to gently... This is one of the only times I'll use the tip of the brush. And we're just going to drag a line, just like this. You're just dragging it, just dragging it across. Um, and we're getting just paint on the tip of the bristles. That way we're not getting brown paint on any of the adjacent areas because we're doing these little detailed crevices. All right, so that's it for his armpits, um, which, I mean, what's even the point? You can barely see him, right? But I like to be thorough in my highlighting because my light is coming straight from the front. I want the model to look nice from that angle. Um, I've talked a lot about directional highlighting. So I'm doing the same thing on behind the knees 
and I'm only, I'm not doing the entire behind the knee, I'm just doing his outside of his knees, um, because if the light was coming from one direction, from the front, that is the only part that it would really be hitting, because we don't need people spending a lot of time staring at our models, but, um, I mean, I guess if you like that kind of thing, go for it, but I feel like the front of the model is the much more imposing feature, and that's what we want people to look at, so that's what we're going to spend the most time highlighting. So now we're done with those grieve joints. Um, I painted all the hosing on the back in the same color, sanguine base. So we're going to continue with that bootstrap leather, um, getting our brush nice and wet again. And now we're going to do, this is the highlighting technique that we'll do for most of the rest of the model. We're going to use just the side of the brush, and we're just rolling it along. I mean, you don't have to twist your brush at all, but you're just kind of rolling it along the edge there. And we're just going to hit the tops of this tubing, give it some nice splash of color, and bring the eye out. And even though it is on the back of the model, I want that tubing to stand out. I spent time painting it a different color from the grays on the weaponry, so I want that to pop a little bit. Doing my directional highlighting. Just hitting the tops of things. Think about flow. Think about light, how it's going to hit. Uh, maybe your rubberized hose is very reflective. Maybe it's some kind of PVC or, or latex or anything like that with like a really high shine to it. So you want to hit just certain areas just a little bit just to pop it out. And I'll show you on the back. So here we have the right side, or I guess his left side. Um, we've got the highlighting applied compared to his other side uh, on the right here. And you can see how dark it still seems, and this kind of helps pop it out with that little bit of brown highlight. So, I'm going to clean our brush and go again. Let's go for the other side here. Starting at the tops where the light is going to hit, and dragging our brush, rolling our brush down. Tapering off, and we're going to hit a few other areas, just using the side of that brush. Alright, go along the cresting of the hosiery here. I guess it's not really hosiery, you can imagine a space marine pantyhose. Alright, and we're going to finish off on the guns, I'm using my ring finger to help brace my brush. Turning the model so that I can get better angle at things. Don't need to do the model all just from the same angle. That's extremely difficult. Uh, toast your model, turn your model, do whatever it takes to get a good angle on it. That way, um, you can be satisfied with your model and give it a nice look. So we're going to clean off our brush. We are done with our bootstrap leather. We can set that aside. Um, now... What shall we do next? We can start on all this gray work, but I want to do... We'll do his uh, little tchotchkes in the front here. Um, I'm going to do... What are we going to use? Let's use Frostbite. This Frostbite is a nice very pale blue, or even a gray, a very pale gray blue. Um, so we just need a little bit of that. So I'm going to wet our brush again. And we're just going to hit, because this is metal, we're just going to hit the tops. Just give it a nice high shine. I'm just doing the front of this thing. being picky with where I place this. I don't want to highlight everything. It's not an overcoat. I don't need to do that. Just need to hit some areas, the corners of things, to help pop it out. And you don't need to go around every single edge. Just whatever makes you comfortable. Whatever you feel you need to make your model stand out, by all means.
touch up the edge of this little chalice in here. This will help give it a little dimension and depth. Paint along those curves, help the eye curve with it. So you can see I did the outer corner up here, and on the lower part I just did the inner corner because our light is hitting from the top. Um, you can highlight from underneath, and it does give a very dramatic effect, but I tend to reserve that for bad guys. I feel like on good guys like Space Marines, they should be lit from the top and really just look imposing, but not menacing at all. And I'm just going to hit the bottom a little bit. Oh, a little bit too much, but that's okay. Um, we're allowed to make some mistakes. If you don't like anything, you can always prime it and repaint it later. So that is it for our frostbite, because we only have the gray in that tone just on the one area. So moving on, what do we want to do next? Let's go ahead and move on to his chest. We're going to get that bone eagle, or aquila, whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, the aquila is the eagle. This is the skull with wings. So uh, winged skull thingy. We're going to use Menoth White Highlight for this. And... Um, Wet our brush, just add a little bit of paint, and again we're just going to use the edge of our brush. Now I like to pull from the outside in, that way I get the thickest parts on the outside of the wings, and it tapers off naturally as you pull it in. Working my way down each feather. hitting the edges of it. Don't even have to go all the way in. Just hit just the edge. There. You can see the dramatic difference from one side to the other and what that does. Um, as you can see, I messed up and got a little white spot on my red. Uh, I'm not overly concerned with that because of where it is at the edge. I'm going to be highlighting that with over red anyway, so I don't need to touch that up because my highlight will cover up my mistake, which is um, why it's important to think about the order that you're doing things. That's why I like to do the inner parts of the model and work my way out, because as I make mistakes, I will be able to cover them up nicely. It's not going to matter too much. So my model is looking to the left, so the rest of my highlighting here on the skull in particular, I just want it from the left side to help draw the eye that way. I'm going to move on to the other edge. Just using the tip of the brush, the edge of the brush. Pulling along, taking our time with it. We want it to look nice. Spend all this time, hour base coating, 10 minutes per wash level. Oops. If you ever get too much paint on your brush, you always want to wash that off immediately. Don't try and highlight with too much paint on your brush. You're going to be miserable because it creates nice thick highlights. And on such a small model, it's not what we're looking for. We want these nice little thin subtle highlights. It's like the difference between dyeing your hair and just giving yourself a little blonde streak, a little skunk stripe. So there we go. We have that nice chest eagle skull thing all taken care of. We're going to move on. Use the same paint. I'm going to get the uh, skull on his arm. Give it some eyebrows, go around the eye sockets. Our light is still coming from the left, so we want to highlight from the left to help draw the eyes that way. Just like that. Alright, so moving on. What do we want to do next? Let's do his ammo casings. Now, bolt guns are fire gold bullets, right? As gaudy as all the emperor things. 
So I'm going to highlight that with sulfuric yellow. It has a moldy ochre base coat. Um, so we want to continue with that yellow. And again, we're just hitting the tops. Just the tops. These bullets using the edge of my brush. Just a little bit, very subtle. We don't need it to stand out too much. The enemy will be seeing them soon enough, right? All right. That's it for the shells. I'm not going to bother highlighting the shells on the back in the ammo casings because mm, that's a difficult spot to get to. And honestly, I, like I said, I don't need anyone staring at the back of my model too long. I want the front to be as imposing as possible. Uh, so we're going to move on. Let's go ahead and do the cord around his waist. Um, that was done with rucksack tan as a base. So we're going to use moldy ochre as a highlight. The same moldy ochre that we painted the bolt shells in first, but not their highlight. So that's okay that we're using the same color because it'll give it a different effect. So we're going to go with the direction of the cord. It looks like it's all sloping to the left which is great, just using nice soft little strokes to go with the braiding of the waist. And we're not painting the entire thing, we're just highlighting, just doing the little tops of each crest of the braid. We're going with the direction of the braids help drag the eye through so there you have it you see a nice everything starting to come together everything's starting to stand out a little bit more as we work our way around um, next we're gonna do Moro white and we're gonna highlight his purity seals here we have one on the shoulder and one on the back Ooh. Uh, sometimes paints get clogged up So just the tiniest little bead of this, we're not going to need a lot. Wet our brush, mix a little bit, just a tiny little bit. And I just like to do the folds and the tops of the uh, edges wherever it seems to crest upwards. I don't really need to do much more than that. So you can see it, it uh, stands out just a little bit more on the back there. And that's all we're looking for, just a little bit. The entire point of highlighting is just call a little attention to these little details that people might not see otherwise. Just be like, hey, look at what my model has. There, see, just a uh, nice little pop, nice little detail bit. All right, so we're going to move on. I'm going to do the gray on all of the weaponry now. So um, that's Iron Hull for the base. So we're going to use Crixbane Highlight, which is more of a green gray, but it's bright enough where you don't really get that green too much. <laughs> green goes with the blue. I'm not overly concerned about that. Just need a few drops of this, although there's a lot of gray. Again, it's a highlight. We don't need to do every little thing. Too much paint. And it happens, too much paint. So tipping just the tip, or dipping just the tip, and I'm just using the edge of my brush and dragging it along. And remember, we want just the tops of things, just the tops. I don't need a hot. That's my dog. I don't need to highlight the bottom of things. I just want to call some attention to my model, to the edges of things. Just help pop it out a little bit. I 
that's the entire point of highlighting. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Just want to show off a little bit. That's all it's for. Moving along nice and slow, taking our time. Don't really need to hit the bottom of things. Just hitting the edges, the top edges. Think about how light falls on it. I'm gonna go ahead and do these ammo belts. I'm just gonna get the edges that are facing out. And then I'm going to go along the top after. There's no reason I have to complete an entire section before moving on to the next one. Just whatever flow feels right. Going along the tops of the ammo belts now. Just hitting the edge. Don't want to get into my crevice too much, just the edge. I get in that crevice, I'll lose all my hard work on the shadowing. Even though washes don't take long, I don't like having to do them twice. Because when you're painting 100 Space Marines, you uh, want it to go as quickly as possible. Cleaning our brush frequently helps preserve your bristles, helps them keep their points. Going along the edges of the on itself. Gauntlet, I guess it is. Gauntlet that fires bullets. Alright, we're looking pretty good here. Moving our way nicely along. Hitting the tops of things only, just the tops of things. Just whispering across, as old Bob Ross would say. Just using the edge of our brush, nice and easy. If you find your paint starting to dry out, make sure you wet your brush first before getting more paint. That way it doesn't crust onto you. Brush, completely ruin it. Forever. A little brush is only about $8 a piece. If you have to buy several of them, dozens of times over, because the brush maintenance is poor. It is a sad, sad day. I'm going to go ahead and move down to the barrel of the gun here. Just hitting the edges. You can see I'm using the tip of my brush now. Just because of the angle that I'm at. I want to make sure that I'm just hitting the hot. The bleh, 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 just hitting the tops. Alright, so that is it for one side. And you can see I haven't done this under bit or anything that comes back that's under his gauntlet. I just want the top. You can see the difference here, how much this side stands out compared to this side. Even from the front, just those little subtle highlights. And again, from the back, you can see the difference it really makes. This has popped more than this by far. You can just see that difference on the ammo belts, casing like that. So we're going to move on. I'm going to go ahead and do his frag pods because that's easy enough. We're just going to do a nice little bead, nice little dot. That's all we need, just boop. 
is coming in from the left side. So now we have a nice highlight on the that grenade launcher on his top. All right. So moving on, we're gonna go ahead and get his other weapon. Like I said, don't be afraid to uh, use your highlights to blend past mistakes. I'm covering up the edging where I painted the ammo shells for. Some of that yellow paint got all over the edges. So I just want to cover it up. I'm going to cheat basically. I'm going to use my highlighting to work for me to cover up my own mistakes. And that'll really help in the long run. It's like I said, doing this a hundred times. I mean, even if you don't have a hundred aggressors, but the rest of your army, you don't want to have to spend that much time. Highlighting. It's one of the most tedious processes, so you might as well make it work for you. Use it to cover up your shame. Alright, we're going to move down to the ammo belt. Just hitting the edges here. I'm not even going to go all the way in. Um, because as you can see the way it curves inwards, I don't want to call too much attention to it. So just a little bit on the inside and moving our way to the outside. Just doing that upper edge first before I move my way across. You know, give yourself a good rhythm nice flow, whatever makes this easier on you. I realize I'm going pretty quickly, but I've been doing this a long time. I've been working with this paint scheme in particular for a while now. A couple years, actually. So I'm pretty used to painting it. But uh, if you need to take your time, there's no harm in that. Take your time. Make it look perfect. You want to make sure that your work it's something that you can live with. Because uh, even if you're like me and not very good at the game, get your butt kicked, have your models blown to little bits and removed just as quickly as you put them out. I don't want them to look good while they're on the table. I'm sure you do too. Moving our way along, keeping with our angle, just the top, which is important to remember as you move your model around in your hand and things to get a good angle, that we're still just highlighting from this direction, just coming straight in on it uh, from a nice angle. Brush is starting to dry out. You can see I've washed my brush many, many times. Many times. Keep it nice and wet. That way you preserve your tips. Totally smacked my head on my lamp. Super good at this, you guys can tell. Super professional. So, moving down, just gonna use the tip of my brush. 
It's my least favorite way of highlighting. So you have to be extra careful. Since you are doing more of a traditional paint. All right, boom, done. Okay, there we have it. That is the gray, all nice and done. Uh, so next, before we move on to the reds and blues, we're gonna do the second coat on our track lighting. For that, we're gonna use Heart Fire, which is a nice yellowy orange. Um, I really enjoy the look of this paint. And you'll be able to see how the, doing that darker orange to start really helps it pop even more just because I'm not painting directly over blue. So I'm going to go in the same order, as close as I can remember the same order, just to give that paint a little extra dry time. Though my paints dry pretty quickly because I have my fan going. Uh, I don't want to muddy them up. I don't want them to mix together on the model, especially for track lighting just because it can all blend together and you'll lose part of the effect. That subtle glow, which is another reason we do the layers because acrylic paint is semi-translucent. So all of these many layers building on top of each other will just really help bring it out and give it a nice Effect. Taking our time with it using just the tip and his eye sockets in there. The reason I want to do this before my blue is that any of the mistakes that I've made while this pulls over, I can touch up with the blue and cover up my mistake. I actually missed one of my spots earlier with the first coat. So instead of going back and doing two coats, I'm just going to do, or uh, instead of going back with that base coat first, I'm just going to go ahead and do it with just the um, hard fire orange to help bring it out. Uh, when I brush again, we don't need to clean it too much because we're almost done here the grill on his backpack. I'm using just the tip, just dragging the tip along. Never push with the brush, always pull it. Push with the brush, you ruin your bristles. You don't have a fine point with your brush. Can't highlight very well, can ya? All right, there we have it. Our track lighting is finished. Uh, I'm going to do one final piece of highlighting on his eye sockets uh, when we're done with everything else. So I'm going to move on to the red because I only have a few things to do with the red. We just have to do the shoulders, his fist, and um, this is Kador Red Base. Make sure it is the red base. The red highlight is actually more of an orange, and I've highlighted with the orange, and that's not a bad idea. 